Today on Two Crazy Ketos, we're gonna discuss 12 different keto food items that may be causing you to stall. And we'll find out what they are right, right after, after this. this. Hey, what's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos. We talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. That's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon in that way. Every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah. So back in January, a lot of people probably got started on the keto lifestyle, and now it's February, and some people may be hitting a little bit of a stall, a plateau, or- Super frustrating. Yeah, maybe even going the opposite direction and putting some weight back on. And the really bad news is there may be some keto foods that are the culprit. Yeah, so today we're gonna go over 12 different keto foods, things that most people who are doing keto are gonna say perfectly fine to eat these. Right. And we're gonna discuss what they may be doing to your lifestyle, how they may be causing a stall, and what we can do to fix that. And the only reason why we know that these are foods that do that is because we experience stalls ourselves with them. Yeah, so we're gonna go over these different things, but I do want to kind of start off this. Don't kill the messengers, please. No, we love you guys so much. We just don't want you to experience needless frustration when you're trying to have success here, month two, month three, month four. Yeah, now we also wanna say that all of these items that we're gonna go over, we're not saying eliminate them out of your diet. We're just saying find the proper place for them. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. Number one, and this is gonna be a big one that a lot of people are gonna be upset about. Should I not look? We're gonna talk about fruit. Berries. So, as you know, on the keto lifestyle, there's very few fruits that you can have. We really say you need to limit to berries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, you know, things like that. Well, fruit could be causing a little bit of a stall or even a weight gain. Because they're not unlimited, they actually have a serving size. And honestly, it has never been a serving size that I'm able to like stick to. Yeah. So. For example, we have some strawberries and we have some blueberries here. Normally we would take these, we would put them in the refrigerator. The problem is every time I open that refrigerator, there's a chance I'm going to grab one of these. It's a drive-by, it's a refrigerator drive-by. The problem is this, it's very easy to overindulge in these. For example, this is a serving of strawberries. On what planet? We have one, two, three, four strawberries. There is no way I'm limiting to this. Four. That is a hundred grams because these are a little bit larger strawberries. These are from the store, four strawberries, and that is six carbohydrates. It's is that actually net? four, no, that's total, Okay. but it's 4.5 total carbs and it's sugar. It's not a lot of fiber, they're sugar, which means insulin levels through the roof. Glucose going up. And I can totally see me eating at least three servings in a serving. Yep. You see what I'm saying? So like it would be what, 12 net carbs? Yeah. Easily, I could see myself doing that. Here's the other one. Here's your blueberries. This is a half a serving of blueberries. Oh my gracious. You got about 12 blueberries in a serving. 12 blueberries and those 12 blueberries are going to be, are you ready for this? Five net carbs. Carbs. So is that half a serving or is that a whole serving? That's a half a serving. Okay. A full serving would be about a half a cup. Okay. It would be, I believe it's 80, 75 grams mm -hmm. and you'd be looking at nine net carbs for a half a cup. So I'm probably going to use berries more in like a mug cake or something. If you're doing a mug cake with blueberries, you're probably going to put about eight to 10 blueberries in there. So you're looking at close to a half a serving. So you're looking at four to five net carbs and that's in addition to all of the other ingredients that are in your mug cake. Yeah. So 
hate to say it, berries, berries. probably if you're experiencing any kind of an issues, the first thing that I would toss out or at least put off to the side and see how you do with that. Yeah. Number two. Pork rinds. This is my Achilles heel. Not so much the pork rind one, but the pork cracked lens. I have never, I mean, even with these, this is a serving to me. Mm -hmm. Because I have in my mind that, well, I can eat pork rinds. And I will eat pork rinds. And I will actually push past the throat thing that happens when you've eaten too many pork, pork rinds because I want to just eat the whole bag because they're delicious, right? Especially I the flavored ones. love pork rinds. And I especially like the better brands, like the Epic ones. So whenever they would go on sale, we would buy a ton of them. Well, we got to the point where we can't keep them in the house. We would rather pay full price for <laughs> and get a, one bag at a time when we really want pork rinds than have a stockpile of them because we just couldn't keep them. Now, why is this dangerous on the keto diet? Yes. Because you don't have a filter to stop eating them. They're light, they're airy, they're full Delicious. of fat, but they don't fill you up because of usually the seasoning. And now if you're eating the plain ones, usually a little bit easier to not overdo. But they're still very high in calories right. when you're eating an entire bag like I was eating an entire bag. This bag, which seems like a lot, but it isn't, has 10, servings in it. 10? Ten? 10 servings in this bag. There, so a serving size is a half an ounce, it's 14 grams. It's literally about four pork rinds. I don't have our scale here, but again, 10 servings, and a serving is 80 calories and five grams of fat and seven grams of protein. I think a super disciplined person is only gonna make three out, three servings out of this. And I don't know that anybody. Would be I don't know anybody that's gonna make 10 servings out of this. Yeah, and if you're trying to lose weight, yes, we use fat to fill us up, but this kind of fat is not gonna satiate you and fill you up. The fat that's gonna fill you up is putting eating a glob of butter, that kind of thing. But well, something like this, it's not going to. And with the seasoned one, there's usually at least one net carb per serving. Yep. So now you're looking at 10 carbs in here. Yeah, so it says on the back, this one here has less than one gram. So it's about 0.75 grams. So you're figure basic, one. always figure, always round up, figure one. So if you eat this bag, 10 carbohydrates. So number three, Guacamole. Guacamole. My favorite condiment, probably outside of your homemade mayonnaise, I love avocado the best. But not avocado slices, guacamole. Because yes. it's so flavorful and I slather it on everything. The problem is that is nowhere near a serving size. Yeah. If you're going to do guacamole, my suggestion would be to buy it like this. And the reason, they, I, this is again, we bought it just for the video, but this is a serving. And, then, and again, that looks like, hey, that's not that much. But guacamole is very dense and it does have carbohydrates in it, but it's very calorie dense. This little cup is 120 calories. It is 11 grams of fat. It is four total carbohydrates, two grams of dietary fiber. So if you're following net carbs, you're looking at two net carbs here. Yeah. And then it's one gram of protein. Honestly, because it's got so much seasoning and so much flavor, so I good. think it's easier to overdo it and you're better off getting some fresh avocado and just eating avocado slices. Or getting this and enjoying guacamole, but in the right amount. Yeah, but if you're <laughs> making it at home, who's gonna scoop out this little bit? You're gonna no. take a big thing. Now we can even add into this, like kind of like three and a half. You already mentioned it, but along with the guacamole, like you said, all condiments, like ranch dressings, things like that, even our blue cheese dressing, which is delicious. It's I mean, so good. If you haven't seen that recipe, there's a link for it right over Rachel's head. But I will eat it by the spoonful. Yeah, easy to overdo. So yeah, all the condiments, but guacamole, that kind of stuff, definitely could be causing a stall. Number four, now this is one that affects me personally and is definitely like my kryptonite when it comes to the keto lifestyle. Cheese. cheese. And I mean all forms of cheese. Now this isn't a dairy thing. This isn't a like dairy is bad. Cause even if you're carnivore, dairy is carnivore. This is cheese is really easy to overdo 
And it's got some hidden carbs in it. I actually saw a meme recently that was talking about eats 24 um, pieces of string cheese and is like, is this keto? Am I ketoing? Like, because yeah. If you're making a lot of recipes that have cheese in it, and I know we even do this with the kids, right? A serving size is like a quarter of a cup. Like when you're pulling out shredded cheese, who does that? You reach your hand in the bag, which by the way, has been now packed down and you're making an omelet and you're probably putting two or three servings of cheese on there. Yeah. Something like this, cutting off a hunk and then not weighing it, every ounce of cheese, pretty much every cheese, so long as it doesn't have sugars and stuff added to it, is going to be one carb per ounce, regardless of what the label says. Remember, they have some room to finagle those numbers a little bit. Figure every ounce, one carb. My real kryptonite, String cheese. Is string cheese. Now this isn't even like the mozzarella. Like those mozzarella string cheeses, baby bells, those kind of they things. They go down fast. I can suck those things down. Yep. This one here was just a gourmet snacking cheese, habanero jack. It's a Monterey jack and jalapeno and habanero peppers. A spicy one may slow you down actually. But yeah, but a serving size is one stick and who's eating only one stick? Not this girl. 80 calories, six grams of fat, five grams of protein. And again, it says here zero carbohydrates, but I'm telling you all cheese has just less than one or one gram of carbs. So always figure every ounce that you're eating has a carb in it. What's number five? Number five is nuts. nuts. Actually nuts were so bad for me that it actually caused keto 2.0 for Rachel because I actually rage quit keto because I had gained weight. Yeah. And I had to come back to it months later. Yeah, Rachel was just constantly eating nuts, didn't realize she was overdoing them and started gaining weight and was finally like, keto doesn't work. Keto works. Eating too many nuts doesn't work. Here's the problem with nuts. The serving size is very small. They're very calorie dense. The good ones for keto, like peely nuts, almonds, Brazil nuts and macadamia nuts are very high in fat and they taste delicious, so it's easy to overdo them. I mean, you get nine Brazil nuts in a serving. Yeah, Brazil nine. nuts are my favorite nuts. Actually, probably second to peely nuts. Macadamias used to be the top. Brazil nuts, though, because they're so large and they're you feel like you're eating something substantial, I love them. I don't think I've ever eaten just nine Brazil nuts. I've never eaten nine of any kind of nut. This almond, a serving size is a quarter of a cup. No way. A quarter of a cup. That's this much. Here's every, a quarter of a cup. Every serving of nuts for me is this size. And you better weigh it out because you know what? I got news for you. I could probably jam about 10 more nuts into 30 grams in this thing than you can. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So it'd be 170 calories, 15 grams of fat, 6 grams of protein, 6 total carbohydrates, 4 grams of dietary fiber, so 2 net carbs. But if you're following a total carb protocol, 6, 6 in a quarter <laughs> of a cup. And I'm telling you, you're going to eat too many. If you want to have nuts, completely fine. Here's our suggestion. Number one, buy individual serving bags. Like this it technically is a serving size. If you want to get peeling nuts, and we have a link down below, they actually have little tiny pouches that are like 150 calories. Right. That's your better option. And literally have one. And walk away from and it. And walk away. Don't even, if you open this package, you're going to eat the whole thing. The yeah. other thing that I would suggest is buy nuts in the shell. Yes. And crack them open because at least if you're working for it, it may slow you down a bit. Don't get the little nutcracker guy. Actually do the hand one. Yeah. Because it will slow you down. Number six related to number five. Nuts butters. Nut butters. They're so We got stinking. a few different ones. Convenience. Okay, here's the thing with nut butters. Again, something that is not super satiating, very calorie dense, very high in fat, and you're going to quickly overdo it. A serving size of this is two tablespoons. No, it's not. I don't think I ever put two tablespoons even when I made peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. No. It's, it's just not a lot. 190 calories, 16 grams of fat, seven total carbohydrates, three grams of dietary fiber, so four net carbs, eight grams of protein. Another one of these things, do not be misled by labels. I know Walmart's got a all natural peanut butter that only ingredient is peanuts. And supposedly everyone's like, oh, that's the one to get. It's the lowest net carb. 
What makes their peanuts so magical that their peanuts have less carbs than Smucker's peanuts? Right. A peanut is a peanut is a peanut. Remember, they can fudge the numbers a little bit. Figure, always go with the highest. You're better off to go with the highest. Yeah. One of my favorites. This stuff is so good. They might as well just put a straw in it. Just attach a straw to the back of this, like an old Capri Sun, because I will drink this stuff. It yeah. is that good. And this is my favorite nut butter. Because when we're doing nut butters, we want to put a little bit on ice cream, maybe a little bit on top of a mug cake, something like that. This stuff's amazing. We actually have a discount code for it. It's Two Crazy Ketos, and there's a link down below. But this is the almond butter and jelly, and they have a few different flavors. But again, a serving size is two tablespoons. There's six servings in a container, 180 calories, 16 grams of fat, three grams of protein, 11 total carbohydrates, five grams of dietary fiber, and five sugar alcohols. It's three net carbs. So it's a little bit better than this because it's being made with almonds, but... It just tastes delicious. And yeah, we have Goes this stuff. down smooth. This is the only bag that I have left. And notice it's not open because the second it's open, it goes on the shelf. And every it's time gone. either one of us walk past, ooh, squirt. grab, squirt in your mouth. Now, we're probably not doing a full serving. I will say that. Where it's going a little bit longer, but it's one of those drive-by items. But here's the thing. That is what I'm banking on. I am saying to myself and consoling myself with the fact of, you're not even giving getting a whole serving. But throughout the day, I've got, I haven't gotten a whole serving four or five times. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, I've gotten more than a full serving. Yeah, nut butters have become one of those things that we just don't keep in the house unless we need it for a recipe or something like that. Because just, I can't. I can't, I can't, I, I can't, can't stop myself. Number seven, we're gonna stick in like the snacky area. Cheese crisps, and also all the other things that you've replaced, popcorn, potato chips, crackers, croutons, all of those things with. Yeah, so we're not just talking about things like this, but we're talking about even like my favorite. Keto, Keto farms. farms. And we're not picking on any one particular company. And again, nothing wrong with any of these so long as we can find the place to put them within our lifestyle. Because the serving size on this is actually two servings, even though I usually make it one serving. Yeah, two same thing with this. this. I mean, I love the F-bomb cheese crisps, but a serving size is seven crisps. It's, there's two servings in this container. And oh, by the way, Take a look at the, the bag. So, I mean, it's worse than potato chips, right? 170 calories per serving. So when I eat this whole bag, I'm eating 340 calories, 28 grams of fat, 20 grams of protein, and two carbohydrates. So the problem is they're not super satiating. Yes, you're going to munch on them, but when you get to the last one, you're going to be like, I'm still hungry. I'm going for a little bit more. Best thing that ever happened was Keto Farms went to individual servings. Yeah. So now... And believe me, when I started eating them like this, I realized like how much I was overdoing. But now I know when the bag is gone, I'm done. And if I eat just this one serving, it's 160 calories. It's four total carbs, two grams of dietary fiber, and 13 grams of fat. But I know I'm done. Again, just another item that really easy to overdo. So, I mean, these are definitely things to just enjoy, but make sure you're measuring them out. Yeah. Number eight. Keto, keto baked, baked goods. goods. Both homemade and store-bought. Yeah. This is something that I have really struggled with, and we've been talking about that lately. I want to eat them every single day. It's really hard for me to walk away from them. They are so sweet. You know, my sugar tooth is gone. Mm -hmm. I now really like the taste of alternative sweetened items, but I really like the taste of them. Yeah, so for example, we have fat snacks, delicious cookies. This is two servings. Nuh -uh. And it is, if you're following total carbs, this is 14 total carbs if you eat the whole package, which I'm sorry, everybody's eating the whole package. Well, even our beloved Smart Cakes that are really like low in calories, if you eat this package, 18 total carbs. Right. So, I mean, and I know that we do the math and it winds up being like no net carbs, but I feel like it still might stall you if you consume a ton of total carbs and all of these sugar alcohols over the course of a week. People say, how can you possibly, you know, create less than 20 net carbs out of 100 total carbs? Real easy. You eat five of these packages. That is 10 of these cupcakes. Just, just eat five packages. 
that would only be 380 calories. They're very light, airy, and yeah, so you can delicious. eat them down. It would be 380 calories with zero net carbs, but you'd be looking at 90 total carbs. That's how I can do it. Yeah. So again, just something that you have to find a place and say it's a once a week thing. Otherwise, you're going to overindulge because it's, again, another thing where your body doesn't have a shutoff mechanism because it's so sweet. And it includes something like a baked good. Which are so good. Whether you're getting it from someplace like this or making them at home. If you're going to make things at home, my suggestion would be doing like a mug cake but using protein powder like keto chow or something like that. And the reason I suggest that is most of these items, if you look at all the ingredients, not this one, but all of these kind of things, almond flour. What are almond flour? It is ground up almonds. That goes all the way back to the beginning when Very we talked about dense. calorie dense. Number nine, bars. keto bars. All of them. I'm not picking on any one company. We've got the Stoka bar. We've got Dang. Dang bars. We've got the Heka bars. We've got keto bars and we have built bars. This is not an ingredient issue. This is my kryptonite right here. This is Rachel's kryptonite. I would eat a box of that. This this has nothing to do with ingredients. This has to do with it's small, it tastes delicious, it's like eating a candy bar, and it doesn't fill you up. It's so good. And to top it off, most of them, well over 200 calories. And if you get into the keto ones, like the perfect keto bars, again, my favorite, this one bar, look, there's so much fat, it's coming out the sides. 18 grams of fat and it's 230 calories. <sighs> so I've got to put this on the list that if you're having some issues with some weight gain, with some stalling, Dang it. some things like that, take a look at how many bars you're eating. I would limit it to one, maybe every two or three days. And if you're having more than one a day, you're definitely having an issue with them like I was. Number 10, ice cream. You scream. We all scream. For high calories. High calories. Lots of fat. <laughs> we love ice cream. We love it. We will eat it by the pint. We love it so much that whenever a new flavor used to come out before you could get them in stores, we would always buy like a case or two of that flavor. So we have a freezer full of it. And we also ended up putting about 15 to 20 pounds on because we have a freezer full of keto ice cream. Yeah, it's delicious, but it is something that you probably have to put a fence around. I mean, if you're experiencing a stall, if everything's going great and you're like, hey, I got this together and I'm not having any problems at all, like this video isn't for you. That's right. But it's for people like me who are frustrated because you've experienced a weight gain or you've experienced a stall and you're like, well, I'm doing everything right and there must not be any reason for this and whose fault is this? And it's also for people who may be getting started on keto and we're trying to help you before you do fall into all of these traps. Yeah. Now here's the problem with ice cream. There's four servings in this and this is like, for example, the Killer Creamery Brownie. There's, and this is a low one, 160 calories per serving. So if you eat this whole thing, what is that? 640 calories. Yeah. It's also uh, 14 grams of fat per serving. Nothing wrong with ice cream. Just make sure you're putting it in its place where it's a dessert. It's a treat. When I was growing up, this ice cream was like a once a week, once every two weeks, maybe even once a month treat. It certainly wasn't a nightly treat. Yeah. Okay, we have two left. They're both kind of related. Uh, but this one here, this is definitely one that we had an issue with when we got started. Heavy cream. Heavy I put cream. it in everything. I cooked with it. It was in you know, my every single coffee that I drank, I was putting in just a splash. I didn't even want to look at how much fat and, you know, calories are in just a tablespoon of heavy cream. Yeah. And we were even adding it into our eggs to get those fluffier eggs. Yeah. Here's the real problem with heavy cream. Aside from the fact that it's calorie dense, take out the fact that if you're buying like the lower quality brands, you're adding carrageenan and stuff like that to your life. That's true. There's six grams of fat in a serving. The real problem is this. Pretty much every container, and this was definitely something that I fell into the trap of, says zero carb. This one actually says less than one total carb. 
but like the one in Aldi's, it says zero carbs. I hate to break this to you. All heavy cream, all heavy cream. I don't care what brand it is. It's like the peanut butter kind of stuff. They all have less than one carb. Less than one carb is not zero carbs. Now, when I would track in my fitness pal before we went to chronometer, I would look for the heavy whipping cream. It wouldn't even be the one that I purchased. Mm. It would be the one that was in there at zero carbs because yeah. I wanted to be able to track and say that I had zero net carbs, even though I knew that that it, it obviously wasn't zero net carbs because there were other brands that had listed it, but yeah. Last one, number 12. This is a big one, and I think this is one that everybody does overdoes when they get started on keto. Number 12, Bulletproof, bulletproof coffee. coffee. Yes, oh my goodness. This was something that I really, really struggled to work out of my life because I was drinking at least one, at least, every single day and having a three, four, 500 calorie beverage. Yeah. And the worst part was we always said, oh, we're intermittent fasting and we weren't counting this. this if breaks you it fast. just put a tablespoon of butter, like I was, I would do a tablespoon of butter or a tablespoon of coconut oil and a tablespoon of MCT powder because it's going to give me some flavoring. That's 250 calories. That's how I, I'm not intermittent fasting. I'm drinking that when I wake up. And if my last meal was at eight o'clock at night, that means I'm not even on a 10 hour fast. I just broke my fast. Well, not me, buddy. I was putting whipping cream. I was putting MCT powder, like flavored in every single one. I was skinny syrup, whatever I could. I mean, there was a party going on in every cup of coffee. It was delicious. It made me super happy. But I was definitely lying to myself that I wasn't drinking anything. Mm-hmm. I was fasting. Yeah. So real problem with Bulletproof Coffee. They're great. I would say if you're trying to maintain. If you're trying to maintain and you need that little get up and go extra fat in the morning, have a Bulletproof Coffee. If you need something to get you through to your next meal, like let's say you ate your dinner, you wake up in the morning, I'm really hungry, but I don't want to have like a big breakfast. I want to kind of wait for lunch. Do a coffee with a half a tablespoon of butter okay. or a half a scoop or even one scoop of the Perfect Keto MCT. That's only 50 or 60 calories. But when you start adding heavy whipping cream and butter and ghee and coconut oil and MCT powder and flavorings, you're going to basically put yourself in a stall or possibly even gain weight. My best suggestion though is what I have started to do and that is, and we're not even associated with this company at all except for we love the product, is the Kai2 Super Creamer. Uh, you can get it on their website. You can get it from Oasis Snacks. You can get it in like sprouts. Because at least you're going to get the flavor that you want without a whole bunch of extra. And three tablespoons is only 50 calories. Which is feels like more of a serving size. Okay, so we got one more. This is a bonus one. Now, this is a big one. It's something we recently talked about in a video. And it is all of the low-carb breads, pastas, and tortilla wraps that you're going to find in the store. The bottom line is all of these things are still made with wheat. Yeah, and just because they've been injected with a ton of extra fiber from out of nowhere doesn't erase the wheat. It's not like you eat a cake and then you eat Brussels sprouts and you're like, okay, well, the Brussels sprouts made the cake completely disappear. They're two separate things and they're both still there. Yeah, and the real problem with wheat is wheat is going to be inflammatory. It's going to cause your glycogen stores to go up. It's just not good for you. The real problem with all of these low carb breads is they end up putting so much fiber and manipulating the numbers where it becomes zero net carb or one net carb. And you're like, oh, I can fit this in. And you start eating multiple of them each day or like throughout the week, you know, you're never going to have just one piece of bread with a sandwich. You're going to have two pieces. Yeah. Whereas maybe you would put like a keto baked good in its proper place. You may not scrutinize the bread as much because you feel it's like a meal. It's part of a meal. So that's 12 different keto foods that may be causing you to either have a stall or possibly even gain weight. Plus a bonus Franken food. <laughs> 
Now let us know down in the comment section if there's any other keto-friendly foods that we may have missed that could be causing you to have a stall or a weight gain or something like that. And what are some advice that you have for putting these foods in their proper place in your meal plan? Yeah, please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. Bye.